about 90 or 95 percent of people say they believe in learning styles. But this is an idea that has been thoroughly debunked in the scientific literature for years and years and years. The question is, why? I don't mean why learning styles is a myth. There are other really, really good videos about that. But this video is about why so many people believe in something that is roundly discredited in the scientific literature. I'm going to lay out five reasons. And we're going to start with the more obvious reasons, and we're going to build up to some of the less obvious and maybe even more important reasons. Reason number one is that I think Americans, or maybe just the world in general, has a preference for personality kinds of explanations. And these personality tests, they kind of exist in a place in between true and untrue. So here's my horoscope. Gemini. They're changing in an undeniable way in my world. I've been fearlessly embarking on new career terrain. Wow, this is so right. You know, there are some people that believe wholeheartedly on, in horoscopes, but a lot of people kind of believe a little bit. They're interested in reading horoscopes, but then they don't fully trust them or they're kind of curious about them, kind of hopeful that they play a role. Another aspect of this problem is the power of personal experiences when it comes to learning and teaching. Everyone has been a student, and a lot of people have been teachers, whether that is a teacher by profession, or say a tutor in an after-school program, or like training new employees on the job, whatever. If you start out believing in learning styles, and you go into a personal experience, say you're a visual learner, and you found that someone presented something visually to you, and you really understood it, well, that is going to kind of trigger your confirmation bias here, because you you already believe in learning styles, you come in, you have this personal experience that confirms your view and that makes you believe in learning styles even more. So what we have is kind of a vicious cycle where you look for confirming evidence in your personal experiences and then uh, that makes you even more likely to believe in learning styles in the future. Uh, there's also a tendency to generalize from your personal experiences. So you have this personal experience and then you generalize to say, people all around the world everywhere. So now we're moving into some of the less obvious reasons why this is a problem. The fact is, learning styles is still being taught to teachers every day. One of my favorite articles on this is a 2016 report on the material that is in teacher training textbooks. So if you look at teacher tra training textbooks, they contain almost no research-backed uh, principles of learning and teaching, and they pass off anecdotal and kind of pseudoscientific ideas about learning as truth. Now, if we look up learning styles here, fully 59% of these texts advocate planning instruction around learning styles, even though there is no evidence that considering learning styles and planning and instruction improves learning. We like to think that there is a research pipeline from the research community to the professional development community, but there's not, essentially, or at least it's a pipeline with some very, very big leaks. Generally speaking, the research community is talking to researchers and the professional development community, which is made up of companies and organizations that train teachers, are talking to themselves and teachers, and the link between the research and the professional development isn't there. Now this might be changing a little bit. There's been a big push in the past five or ten years for more research-backed instruction, but there's still a lot of misinformation out there. With all that being said, I think it's important to remember that what Learning Styles is trying to explain is a real phenomenon. Two people come into the same learning experience and they leave with different outcomes. That happens all the time, everywhere, every day. There are other explanations, good explanations, for why two students who enter into the same learning experience will end up with different learning outcomes. And I made a whole video about that, which you can see here. Look, I haven't finished that video yet, actually. It was in the docket, I was going to make it, it doesn't, it doesn't really matter, just, it's not done yet. Don't, don't be mad. But the fact is, is that these explanations are rather complicated, and 
different factors interact with one another, and there's some stuff that we just don't know about yet. The last factor that I think is playing a role here is the precision in the words that we use. So if you go back to these surveys and you ask people about learning styles, it's not always clear that people are responding to the question in the way that we think they are responding. So cognitive psychologists have a very particular definition of learning styles, right? It's not just a preference for a certain mode of learning, or it's not just a preference for podcasts, or you enjoy watching videos or something like this. No, it's that your preferences lead to specific learning outcomes, and that if we match the mode of your learning with your learning style, then your learning is going to improve. And it's that idea that is wrong. When I talk to teachers and other people involved in education, a lot of times they'll use the words learning styles, but I don't jump on them. I don't correct them right away because I understand that how they're using it is more in a vague sense. They're talking about all the things that might go into one student learning differently from a given set of materials than someone else. And so it's important to keep in mind that maybe this 90 or 95 percent figure is not as high as we think. But this just comes back to the idea that we have to be very precise when we define scientific terms. This is just one way that research doesn't make its way into professional development or into practice or into policy making. Now there are lots and lots of other examples, but each case has its unique qualities. Thanks for watching. Like the video, especially if you liked it. And I'll see you next time.